In this video, we're going to look at some calculations involving specific heat. So every substance has a characteristic ability to absorb heat, meaning uh, if I have two substances that are made out of different materials, when they absorb heat, the change in temperature is not going to be the same. And this gives us the idea of the specific heat, or you'll sometimes hear it called the specific heat capacity. And this is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of exactly one gram of a substance by exactly one degree Celsius. And the two common energy units that we use in chemistry are joules and calories. And so we can report the specific heat in joules or calories. And because joules and calories are different sizes, uh, these will have different numerical values. So to use this in calculations, if I want to know... Uh, the heat that is gained or lost by an object, I would take the mass of that object, multiply it by the temperature change, then multiply that by the specific heat. Or in more compact form, the way we'd write the equation is heat is equal to mass times delta T. So anytime we're talking about a change in a quantity, we often put a delta in front of that. So this delta T means change in temperature. So we've got mass times change in temperature times the specific heat. All right, so here are some common substances, uh, and you can see, right, the different substances have different values for the specific heats, and they've given us the specific heats in both calories and joules. So depending on what units the problem uh, either gives us or wants us to give our answer in, we would pick the appropriate specific heat. All right, so uh, the way one of these problems might look is this problem asks us how many kilojoules are required to heat 225 grams of titanium from 22 degrees Celsius to 550 degrees Celsius. So in order to calculate heat, I need the mass, the change in temperature, and the specific heat. They've given me the mass. I can use these to calculate the change in temperature. And then I need the specific heat. So they either need to give that to me in a problem, or I need to have access to a table where I can go look it up. And so we want to know the specific heat of titanium. So if we go back to the table we had on the last slide, so I have titanium down here, and the problem is asking me to report my final answer in kilojoules. So we could use either one, but it would be less work if we go ahead and use the specific heat in joules. That'll give us our heat in joules, and then we just have to convert that into kilojoules. So I want to use this for my specific heat. All right, so I've collected the information we need. Here's our equation. Here's the specific heat of titanium from the last slide in joules per gram degree Celsius. So I also need to get delta T. So the change in temperature is always going to be the final minus the initial. So I'm going to do 550 minus 22. So that gives me a change in temperature of 528 degrees Celsius. So now I have everything I need to plug into this equation. So to get the heat... I'll take my mass, which is 225 grams, times my change in temperature, which is 528 degrees Celsius, and I'll multiply that by the specific heat. And that has units of joules divided by grams times degrees Celsius. All right, it's not a bad idea to make sure my units cancel. Right, so I have a gram in the numerator, which will cancel with the gram down here in the denominator. I've got a degree Celsius that will cancel with my degree Celsius. And so that tells me that my final answer is going to be in joules. So when I multiply all of that out, and to three significant figures, so all three of the numbers I'm multiplying have three sig figs, so my final answer should have three significant figures. So I get 62100 joules as the amount of heat. Now, I have to be a little bit careful, right? My specific heat was in joules, so the heat that I get is in joules. This problem specifically asked me to report my answer in kilojoules, so I have to do one more unit conversion. So this is one of the conversion factors that I want you to know, right? That kilo means 10 to the 3, so that means my conversion factor is 1 kilojoule. Remember, the 1 always goes with the prefix. And that's equal to 10 to the 3rd, or 1,000 joules. All right, so now I can take my 62,100 joules. 
I want the jewels to cancel, so I put 10 to the third jewels on the bottom. One kill jewel on top. And my final answer then is 62.1 kilojoules.